And we are back with another episode of Socratic Gamers, a very special episode because uh, it is Diwali. And, uh, oh no, I just passed Diwali and Vish is back from his long hiatus <laughs> two of, days. of two days not being <laughs> in the apartment and me just playing uh, GTA with Sid and Tara, creating our own podcasts. So yeah, we're back. If you don't, if you don't know what game this is, do you want to preface them on what game this is? If you don't know what this game this is, yeah, you, you should, um, you shouldn't be listening to Socratic Gamers. Yeah, why are you here? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is Overwatch, bro. Overwatch, so... Uh, the number what? one game in the world. Elon nope. Musk plays this game. That's true, that's pretty cool. Uh, so, let me jump right into my first question about being Diwali. Is it Diwali or Diwali? Or Diwali? Diwali, I think. Diwali? Okay, how come it's not Or Di? Diwali. Diwali, what's that? Diwali. Diwali. Like, Dipavoli. it's just a uh, longer version of it. Diwali oh, okay. is just short. So, uh, what is de, de, de Pauli? This Festival of Lights. And, like, uh, what is it? You, you were telling me before that it is uh, quite similar to uh, your our uh, Christian Catholic Christmas. Is it? Or yeah, is it not? It's the same thing. It's the same thing, really? So, you guys have Santa Claus? Uh, Santa Claus is made up, but uh, <laughs> we have gift giving, I guess. Okay, cool. Yeah, <laughs> gift giving. So is that the only similarity? You're like, oh, it's it's just a holiday where we can uh, exchange gifts. Yeah. Okay. So no, I mean, there, there's a meaning to why this exists, right? Like in their story, it's after um, the Avatar version of Vishnu called Ram comes okay. back after 14 years of exile. Okay. Yeah. And that's the celebration. And it's also like the triumph of a good over, good over evil. Oh, that's cool. So, like, so, like, to sum summarize, uh, what Diwali is, is it is the return of Ram and the triumph over good against evil. Yeah. Oh, that's not bad. So, like, that has nothing to do with uh, our Christian holiday Christmas. The only thing, like, so the only thing is, like, it's like a uh, commercial gift giving. You know, that's the only real similarity there, bro. No. Isn't okay. What what other than that? Commercial gift giving was a new thing, right? Okay, so so there Christmas, is something else to it. Christmas is the birth of Jesus, and Tri well, it's is not. Is it the no, birth no. or is yeah, it's it the birth of Jesus? Oh, okay. You're thinking of Good Friday. Good Friday is where he like dies, returns, and returns, and stuff. But um, yeah, so Christmas is. I'm pretty sure there's other similarities too. Well, um, a, a quick or maybe down for yeah, non-Christian people. Um, they think that uh, Christmas is all about Santa Claus. Christmas, actually, you know, Jesus, I think Christmas Jesus. is different. Or not Christmas. What you're Diwali? speaking of is Christian. A Christian thing is different than Catholicism, right? Uh, yeah. That's well. Uh, allegedly, the only difference between Christian and Catholic is Catholic they they um, worship Mary. They worship Mary, and Christians don't. They think that Mary is just like a vessel uh, that God used. She's not holy. Essentially, yeah, that they, they should be no other symbols, right? I don't even think, like, you should be having like crosses or something. Yeah, you know, the like the that level of stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, totally. So actually, um, I heard somewhere I can't remember the exact uh, the exact um, reference to it, but Christmas is actually a pagan holiday. Oh yeah, yeah, it goes back to that. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like so. What is it? Maybe the pa maybe it matches what paganism thing was. Uh, your your Diwali? I don't know. Yeah. Probably, probably, because like for us, like Jesus wasn't actually even born in Christmas. He was born sometime in July, allegedly, if they if they got that correct. Um, but the, we we say that it's around the Christmas time. But initially, like like it it's like they just wanted to go all commercial on it, you know. So they it's kind of like yeah, but it's kind of like when there's other people already following a certain uh, like tradition. Yeah, yeah. They just kind of fit into that tradition. To yeah. make it so that they would follow it. True. Okay. Okay. I got what you're you know, saying. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. 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 So it's like, uh, um, so in order to, um, in order to like, uh, what do you call that? Propagate a certain religion. Yeah. They make it accessible and relatable to all religions so that other people yeah. will follow it. Yeah. Basically okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. You know that in uh, elementary school, when you're doing confirmation for Catholicism, yeah, you're no, supposed. I don't know that. Oh no, I'm just like telling you right now. <laughs> <laughs> so like in Catholic school, when I was in elementary school, we had this thing called um, uh, freaking 
con- confirmation. Yeah. And uh, what you did is like you took on a saint's name and it became like you, That's essentially. Weird. Like, yeah, it's very, it's very weird. It's um, it's kind of like when uh, oh. like Sorry. if you look at it from a yogic perspective, it's almost like your new name because your first name was like given to you, at, like as like you not being who you think you are. So uh-huh. you choose a new name. In order to like reestablish who you are to the society, yeah, something like that, and you have to pick like a uh, a saint's name. I'm probably butch- butchering it, but like I'm pretty sure this is what I remember. Like this is what I remember. Yeah. And um, so guess guess what saint I uh, I chose for I this know, one? Augustus. So why why Saint Augustus? It's just one of the philosophers that I know. Oh okay <laughs> okay. No no no. Well, I was in elementary school. I wasn't a philosopher back then. I was like. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just say so. So one of my friends, so me and my friend uh, Guan, <laughs> we uh, we uh, <laughs> we, were, we were like messing around. And we were both trying to figure out the worst name to pick. So he chose Elmo. <laughs> you know, Saint Elmo. He's like looking at the book. He's like, oh, this one sounds so dumb. Saint Elmo. <laughs> I'm Saint Elmo. And I had to one up him, right? And I was like, oh, okay. I like that. I like that. Right? It's pretty clever. I was like, okay, okay. What am I gonna do to somehow make it that I'm gonna best him on this one? I chose Saint Nicholas. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Santa Claus. Little did I know that uh, it's not at all like Saint Nickel, like Santa Claus at all. He like he's the reliever of suffering or something like that. Oh, I think I don't know. But yeah. what you remember? I guess. Well, what? It's from what you can remember. From what I can remember, saying, yes, like, a long time ago. So, uh, so you're we we're saying that there's a lot of similarities between Christians and Hindus before, you know, and like um, what what do you see? As like similarities no it's uh it's more like um what do we see uh i think more towards catholicism i don't know about christian okay yeah uh, well they're pretty much the same thing it's just one uh believes in mary one doesn't i don't know if they would say that allegedly <laughs> whatever no, i mean i wouldn't i don't think they would say that it's that the only difference is that um true yeah you're right you're right the, the similarities are what did I notice from I remember I remember because you were very curious back uh, back in the day and like I'd always go to uh, mass every Sunday right with my parents yeah I'm like what is this about and you're like oh like let me tag along one time and then I was like yeah sure and that actually entertained me I was like oh okay this is gonna be an actual fun mass and then at the end of it you're like oh it's very similar because you're saying that um, instead of the body of Christ which is like right. the bread that we have yeah, yeah, you yeah. swap it out with fruit uh, there's a lot of kneeling and standing a lot of mantras aka prayer yeah uh, there's a lot of uh, you know veneration over stuff you know and we got like a lot of artwork on the walls uh, there's not only as much artwork oh in, in Hinduism no it's just more uh, statues of gods yeah true 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 so um, would you almost say that like like I, I personally think that religion is kind of like a way for people to overcome their fear of death, you know, or uncertainty, you know, because like whenever you, I think uncertainty makes uncertainty. More sense. So, so whenever you feel, bad it's like about, it's it's when it's like when you don't have control over something and you wanna, you wanna you, play someone some like pseudo you control. Some, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, oh no, I hope I do well on my test. Okay, just pray to God. Yeah. You know? And and like, but you know, it's interesting, like. Uh, all cultures around uh, the world, they have some version of prayer in order to alleviate the suffering of uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Like, I know in Vietnam, they have, like, certain gods that you pray to before your exam. Vietnam? Yeah. Vietnam, yeah. Um, and, uh, like, everyone says, like, pray to God all the time. In Hinduism, do you, you pray to gods, I'm assuming? Like, I remember something about that. Yeah. So you pray to, you pray to who do you pray to well, in Hinduism? Uh, I think all prayers start depending on what it is, but all prayers starts from uh, get to Ganesh first. Why Ganesh? He's not even the highest god. But he is the what does Ganesh mean? Like is the sustainer or something? Not no, he's not the sustainer. Creator. He, no, no, he's not the creator. Destroyer. To, to remove obstacles. To oh, remove oh obstacles. yeah, the remover of obstacles. That's and, what it was. So essentially, is like the obstacle, the obstacle of your mind. Is that what they're trying to like suggest there? Uh, again, I guess it's up to your interpretation. Okay, but but to these people, they take it literally. So like, if there's a mountain in your way and you can't get through it, you just pray to Ganesh and he's just gonna remove it for you. Is that what the like? Is it a physical? Yeah, obstacle yeah. You or like pray mental? to him and then you 
buy some dynamite and blow it up. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I think if they did, they, they wouldn't just do it. <laughs> <laughs> They're just praying. And then it's like... Um, yeah. Hopefully it'll disappear one day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, in a thousand years, it'll erode itself. And then... Uh, <laughs> You just have to be patient. That's what Guinea should say. I think I think a lot of them don't take it literally. They take it as a metaphor. Okay, yeah. Let's, let's right? Like, that. like yeah. I see, if you see a lot of cars that are driven by people who, of that religion, Hinduism, yeah. you'll see a Guinea statue. Yeah, for sure. Like, because well, why do you do that? To remove the obstacles. So you don't want to get in a crash. Yeah, but like, but if you're, like, who's the real obstacle there? Because you're all, you've all got Guinea statues and... You're all just driving. So they just don't. It, no, it's just. It's again. It's a mind at ease thing. Oh yeah, for sure. It's like that's all what it suffering. is. Yeah, that's yeah, what it sure, represents. Sure. That. Like it's just that. It's not like it's gonna actually do something. No, hundred percent. People will get an accident. Yeah. True. Yeah. 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 No. Hundred percent. Yeah. It's just uh, a way to alleviate the suffering of the unknown, which is like your fear of getting into a crash. Will I get into one? Will I not get into one? It's like you're you're essentially pulling off a placebo on yourself. It's a placebo, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it, like you just missed something and it's like, oh, because it was a good For sure, action. yeah. It, it, but it's like... It's like lucky socks, you know? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like when people like, are like, I'm going to put my lucky socks for this basketball game and they win the game, like it's because of the socks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like, it's uh, the same concept, basically that. Yeah, true. Yeah, totally. It's totally. yeah, the po- like the false positives. Or so maybe something. that's the benefit of religion. Then you know what I mean. It like offers up some ability to, um, to like, to like go beyond and surpass whatever it is that you think you are. Well, as long as it does that, that's also, that's fine. But I don't think a lot of people feel it like that. And then we have like the problem of like, um, there's are extremists too, yeah, right? Extremists, when yeah, they yeah, yeah. Literally take it too. The interpretation is too literal. And yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. So so after Ganesh, who do you pray to? Depending on what it is, I think. I don't, I don't know. That oh, really? got a god for everything? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, like... Allergy god? Like, so what, what I learned today, because uh-huh. not everywhere in India, like, celebrates it exactly the same. Because okay. there's so many different cultures to it, right? Uh-huh. uh-huh. Even though it's surrounded by the same religion. So, like, in northern India, the, the people... This it's also their New Year, their financial New Year. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So it's like tax season. No, not tax season. It's just I, it's like where the books come to an end. Oh yeah, and so, yeah, the, yeah, that's yeah. where they're they would pray to I think Lakshmi or oh. something, goddess of wealth or something like that. It's the fiscal year. Yeah, it's the end, end of the of fiscal year. No way! Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. That's why it's different. That's that's only in the north. That's not everywhere else. So in in the north, Diwali is. Um, no, it, there's, there is Diwali, and they also have at the same during that same week. Oh, I see. Yeah. Interesting. Huh? We're we're. Uh, do you know if Hindus were uh, taking taxes and stuff like recording? Were they doing accounting back then, or is that more of like a? You mean I, Hindus I or you mean Indians? Indians, <laughs> Indians. Yeah, 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 yeah. Indians, Indians. Because I kind of feel like that's sort of like a Roman thing, you know? Romans are the first ones who... Oh, no, I think they had taxes, banking too. Systems. I think oh, okay. Had taxes, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so, uh, so do you... Like, uh, can you explain your childhood as, like... Because uh, I'm so fascinated by, like, uh, Hinduism because it's so, like, rich with... Um, rich with like spiritual lore you know what I mean? like spiritual lore not like not like answers to anything i'm just saying like you're you're yeah, there's a lot of good stories that's that's what makes it I exactly guess, still yeah, appealing yeah. to a lot of people for sure for sure so like uh how were you raised in oppo- as opposed to like the modern western person who was raised uh the way i was raised yeah hmm like just just like explain your like upbringing you know like did, yeah. All right, let me just ask you. Yeah, you asked me. That's yeah, probably better. You're like, you're like I, I, oh, I, 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 was, start this. I wake up every morning. Um, oh, okay. No, no, no. I don't mean like that. No, I mean like... So <laughs> no, like, no, 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 no. I, I just remembered something. Okay, like, okay. So, so explain it. Like, basically every day, once you're taking your shower, you go pray. Oh, really? You prayed? Uh, well, I... It's not like I prayed. I just said stuff. Okay. I don't know what it meant. And, and <laughs> what, what was it? What was it? To, like to deal with it's just the way you start the day to respect um, like your elders respect the gods like what are you respecting your environment your environment or it's also like asking forgiveness to because you're walking on the earth and stepping on stuff is not nice oh interesting yeah i remember you told me that once and i was like oh that's like pretty hardcore that's, know, a, that's 
But again, if everything. you understood that, if, I don't think everyone. If you, some people just say it. It's right? almost Nobody like a hardcore Jainist, man. They're like. I don't, don't think that's hard. There's. I'm not a Jain, though, right? No, no, but I. But like, like you're. No, no. All you're saying is no, no, no. It, I think that's not hardcore. Jainist is more like you're trying to not kill things when you're on here, right? You're covering right. up and stuff. Right. All you're asking, all you're saying is, like, it's. it's I don't. I don't know. If forg forgiveness may be a strong of a word. It's more uh -huh. like. Um. Uh. Like I guess thanking me or some something like that, where, like I'm, yeah, I think like stepping on something is very disrespectful in India, right? Oh, okay. Like yeah, to yeah. to touch someone with your leg is not a good really, thing eh? to do. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Is yeah. it because of, like the dirt or? No, it's it's like it's not a clean part, I guess, right? Right. It's, it's, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's always dirty and stuff. It's, it's like your uh, left hand, or is it right hand? Uh, it's your left hand. <laughs> 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 yeah, if for anyone who doesn't know, uh, you want to fill them in as to why we're laughing with the left hand. I think they can figure that out. Search it up, or or we'll we'll or give you them a clue. The um, there is no toilet paper in India. <laughs> I think that's yeah. So pretty <laughs> not much. in India everywhere. It just is you know certain areas. It's not, it's not only there too though, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I remember in Thailand, there's no toilet paper, just a bucket of water and a hole in the ground. Yeah. And when I saw, it, I was like, mm, I'm gonna hold it. I'm good. <laughs> no, this is not cool. Yeah. So, um, so that's like, why you don't touch anything with your left hand. Are you yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I was thinking about like how, because you're describing like you wake up and it sounds like you're being very grateful. You know? Yeah, I think that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, like you start your day with a practice of gratefulness. Mm -hmm. Whereas like in Western culture, it's often about like uh, conquering, you know? It's not a bad thing, but it's just like, if you just, look at the- It's just our, their different view right, if, if you, of if how you, to spend their time on Earth. <laughs> no, no, but, but if you look at like the historical, um, cre like the, um, not creation, but like the lineage of where the West came from, it was like Rome, and then Rome branched out into Great Britain, and then yeah. Great Britain became America, and then Canada, blah, blah, blah. So that's like what we call Western society. Right? Yeah. And like, I find that in the Western society, they, they are missing like a practice of gratefulness and like respect for your elders, respect for nature, respect for all this stuff. And like, because of that, uh, you have like this, this like disconnect and like unhappiness, sort of. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you need the unhappiness. No, a hundred percent, hundred percent. But like happiness. Yeah, a hundred percent. But you're you're saying that from a place of being grown up, having grown up in uh, in a very philosophical household. Yeah. Not not intentionally, like just the fact that your culture was like that. You know, and like so. I, I, but I don't know if everyone. So it's also changing in India too, right? Oh no, a hundred percent. Of course, it, the Western. I think it flips. Yeah. Everything it flips once in a while. No, of course, because the West will become the East. The East will become the West. It's like that whole half uh, um, ideology of yeah. like. Um, or not ideology, like analogy of like too much ha, you become tha. Ha means like uh, fast energy. Tha is like slow energy. Mm -hmm. So like you go too fast too quickly, you're gonna have to slow down. And then vice versa, if you're going too slow, you're gonna need to rev it back up. Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. in the West, they're very focused on like um, the self, the lowercase self, like the self-centeredness. And in like the East, they're very focused on like the uppercase self, which is like collectivism, you know, like yeah. seeing things as one thing, you know. And like um, I bring that up because like a lot of uh, a lot of the I bring that up because like a lot of the the things that we learn about, well, I've been learning about through like my own studies in Western culture about spirituality and about Eastern life, uh, particularly like yoga and stuff, is that like all of these things were ingrained as like. Uh, philosophies as a child mm -hmm. you know what I mean like people always say like oh um, eat like I'm sure when you were a kid they were saying like oh you know that like in India it's very difficult to get food so be appreciative of the food that you're eating um yeah uh, like I'll give you an example like uh, if we didn't finish our meal my dad would be like you know like people in Philippines are like starving you know mm -hmm. and it's like you need to be appreciative of your food because like they can't eat so the fact that you can it's like Blah blah. Yeah. You know, it's like you need to, you need to practice gratefulness. Yeah, right? yeah. So like, but if you come from like the Western perspective of like a lack of gratefulness, and then you all of a sudden go to the East, like that. That's what I'm really like targeting right now. Yeah. It's like it's very interesting because like we we have a very privileged state in the West, and then 
all of a sudden the mind cracks when you see something like not privileged mm -hmm. you're like oh man i didn't know about all this suffering and then you go to like a eastern person you're like yeah dude like i've been told that since i was a child you know like like you, you know like the beatles going to india but, and but yeah we i know i know but they uh, but not like why did it like why is the west so developed like can i live in india currently uh, since i've been no, used to here no no of course not no but it didn't take them they were their selfishness took us to this point 100 percent. no no 100 percent. so there's positives and negatives there, there are positive and negatives but it, it's interesting to like see the recur like the re-emergence of spirituality aka collectivism mm -hmm. and it's like yeah. but like coming from a very collectivist like household it's already like ingrained principles yeah you know what i mean and you see like the you see like the astonishment of people who have not been collectivists yeah so like what, what, what I'm really getting is like when you're kids, you don't really realize what it is you have. Yeah. You know, and like you don't even really think about it. And then all of a sudden, like when you get older, you're starting to see the differences in like culture. I think it's also like seeing people in suffering, right? You don't really see that much in. For sure, but you're told about it. At least you're aware of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Could, could you imagine if you. It's like Siddhartha, right? Like you've never seen any suffering, then one day you see suffering and you're like, oh my god, blah, blah, blah. Actually, you know so what? Was he leading the ultimate western life i was about i was about to say actually like, <laughs> like siddhartha can be a great uh metaphor for western living right. Ma maybe that's why like the west took so heavily to yoga because when they uh when they found out like these actually well yoga is not really a buddhist that's more of a buddhist thing siddhartha is a buddhism you know well a, a lot of like well all right well we can we can just take it as like a very interesting similarity that siddhartha himself exhibited west going to east mental mm -hmm. shifting yeah he did live a luxurious life yeah exactly yeah uh so if all right so if anyone's never heard of um siddhartha before like a quick summation he was a prince of india so not of india they're just a, of some some place in india right? you know, in, in, in india though but yeah, india, not, yeah. not like of india yeah, like yeah, the no, whole, you know, no, no, not the, you know, no. like some state, some province, or something. Yeah, like exactly, that. exactly. And uh, yeah, he can't be the prince. There's no prince of India. There's no king of the whole of India, right? No. Yeah, exactly. So, 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 he, so he was like a prince of some segregated part of India, and then his father wanted to hide him from, um, like, shelter him from any sort of suffering. Yeah, because he was told that he, I think he talked to like a prophecy person. Oh, like, really? Yeah, and they told him like he'd, he's going to either become a great king. Uh -huh. Or he's going to become like some spiritual leader or something like that. That's that's interesting. And he wanted him not to be a spiritual leader. Oh, because he wanted to propagate the fortune. Yeah, and but so by not you know trying to shelter him, caused him to become the, the spiritual is. leader. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting because like what you're. It's weird how like like stories through like translation and like reinterpretation i hadn't heard that part because i read siddhartha by herman hess mm -hmm. and he didn't say that whole part about like he was he was prophesized to be a a great leader yeah yeah yeah, yeah it was it just went straight into like he was being sheltered again i think it's also like again there's so many cultures that follow it so there's additions or subtraction from the story yeah yeah, yeah. or alterations like alterations what agenda, is probably a better word for that. what what agenda are you trying to get off and like let me just shift it in that yeah, direction yeah, yeah. kind of thing yeah totally so um yeah so his his parents sheltered his dad sheltered him and then he was not allowed to see anything uh and then one day he saw someone dying like people sick people sick yeah, yeah something like that and then he like freaked out he realized that like oh death is coming for us all he basically had a mental breakdown and then uh, <laughs> yeah. he went on this whole spiritual path to alleviate himself from suffering, ultimately realizing the suffering is caused in your mind. Yeah. And if you can put an end to the mind, you can um, you can relieve yourself of suffering. You know what? You know what's interesting? But he had a lot of ego too though, at he, first. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like well, he didn't ego is the mind. No, I don't know, but I mean like when he was looking for all that stuff too, right? Oh yeah, for sure. He's like, like he didn't like like some of the gurus that he went to in India, like he didn't understand it what they were trying to say. Right, right, right. So he's like, "You must be wrong." Kind yeah. Of thing. Yeah, 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 it's always always. It's uh, it's it's interesting with um, with that because like you hear a lot of like talk in spiritual life about like some very difficult tasks mm -hmm. where it's like um, it's like uh, Buddha's mind. So this is one. This is one I always gets me. It's like 
Buddha's mind is so great that uh, Buddha's mind is so um, reined in that it's more like a tool for him. When he needs it, he'll bring it back. Okay. And you're like, you're like, what the hell does that mean? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But like, if you just practice things like being present, then you're able to ring back in the mind. So like, right now we're we're doing this podcast, uh, we're playing video games, and nothing else is like taking our attention away from this moment. Right. Right. So we are fully present. There's no mind in the situation. Mm-hmm. Although the mind is always there because it's working for you. There's no thinking mind. Yeah, yeah, you know, but then like as soon as we shut this off and we're silent, thinking mind will come back. Thinking mind might even be here while we're. That's when you see like people who are distracted, right? And then it's like they can't keep up. They can't keep up the conversation because they're thinking about a problem. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like, um, so yeah, like it. Although it's like coveted quite highly, it's something completely achievable if you explain it in plain English. You know, what I mean? if you start going poetic about it, it's like uh, the mind can be roped in like a tool to be governed by the true and higher self right and you're like what the hell like i'm never gonna achieve the state but then somebody's like dude you're just thinking too much yeah you know it's like <laughs> it's literally the same thing that's actually literally the same thing yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like it's weird that because of that you create like uh d- like different not differentiations but like classes you know like what what truly is a brahmin what truly is a uh um, uh, what do you call those people? Uh, sadhu. What really is like, uh, um, you know, all these like spiritual terms. You know, what's what's really a guru? You know. Yeah. A rishi. You know. What rishi is Kesh. Yeah. What, <laughs> what is what does that stuff mean in your uh, through your? Like, these people are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like because I know they're like in like Hinduism they're coveted quite highly. So like, being a person of Hindu background, maybe you could fill us in on. But, uh, mm, no, it just it's just a uh, title, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like, um, so but are they seen as like holier than thou in India? Uh, I think it depends on who you ask, right? Yeah. Okay. True. Because like a sadhu is because because it's, it's not like everyone follows one ideal. Because there's in India, there's so many cultures. You know, like the state next to it doesn't even speak the same language. Right. So many different languages that everyone has slightly different meanings of it and right, right right so right. what they th- you can have people that are ultra religious mm-hmm. i think this can be in any culture but yeah. you can have people that are like follow it because it's tradition right oh, yeah for sure and not sense. necessarily yeah like take any actual they may take some meaning but not like i understand yeah yeah yeah, yeah like, like they're they're uh they're seeing it not for literal truth yeah yeah so like um do you like you know like sadhus and babas like those people um that wear like like they put like um like ash all over their body Mm -hmm. and they walk around naked and stuff yeah are they like so like in in western culture people are like oh man that's like a baba yo like he is highly highly awakened but then i'm assuming like in india people are probably like put on some goddamn clothes (laughs) you know what i mean (laughs) some people may think that or some some people people see them as priests no, I mean, like, he's on his journey. Like, nobody gets involved in people's yeah, lives. Yeah, but, but it's like sense. it's like people say he's on his journey. But it's like, it's like, dude, th- if you're all <laughs> doing the same thing, you're not on a freaking journey. You're on a freaking, uh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, on yeah, a yeah, freaking yeah, mission. Yeah. Like, you're all doing the same thing. You know, everyone wants to be a freaking unique slow f- snowflake, but we're not unique snowflakes. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, when they say things like, uh, oh, um. But I think, I think people do sh- have some respect for them. Oh, okay, yeah. So what do you mean? Like, the things I can remember was like, if you see them and you just you give them some food and whatever, right? Because they don't really... Yeah, but that's work. like, that's almost like homeless people here. Like, do you look at the homeless <laughs> person and you're like, oh, he's a baba? No. Or you're just like, oh, that's a freaking homeless person. <laughs> yeah, they're just, it's a marketing gimmick probably for them. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So it's like... So <laughs> and I'm pretty sure there are, people know that too. Like, there, there are some bad ones too. They're just doing it for... The wrong reasons. <laughs> yeah. So, do you think that you think that some of them are on a spiritual path? Okay, I don't know. I I don't believe in all that stuff too. So. And what even is a spiritual path? You know, what I mean, it's like, it's like they're relying on people. It's like they almost didn't want to live in the world, so they're relying on other people to live in the world. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. Kind of ironic. It, it, yeah, it is. It is. They're trying to. Yeah, you're in the world, bro. Just, just. 
be in the room. <laughs> it, right, totally. And it's like, it's like, no, no, but I must only accept things from my bowl. <laughs> and you're like, okay, well, I worked for 12 hours to buy you something for your goddamn bowl. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's like you're just walking around asking for stuff in your bowl. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's almost like, it's almost, it's almost like a pathology in itself, you know? Like, it's almost like a, a crazy, it's like we're acknowledged because, like, we've titled them as spiritual and good and, like, all that stuff. We, we feel okay with, like, giving them the helping hand. But what if all of us started marketing, like, homeless people as, like, spiritual? It's mm-hmm. like, dude, no, no, no. He's sleeping outside because he's spiritual. He doesn't <laughs> want to be a part of it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and then all of a sudden, then like people from India will come over and they're like, we're like, oh no, that's our Baba. <laughs> you know, it's like, it, that's that's the real like. I mean, not all of them do that, right? Like, I have like a, a village okay. where my, um, like, I forgot, Gokern, where they come from, where that place is. Okay. Like, next to their. Uh, their neighbor is is a priest place, like not okay. um, a, a do they temple, call them, right? Do they call them guru? No, they, I don't know. I forgot what they call them, but they know them by name. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. But they they sell stuff too. They gotta make a living. <laughs> exactly. So it's like, dude, we all gotta make a living. Living. It's like you're you're just as spiritual as I'm spiritual, bro. Yeah. You know, like yeah. what is spirituality? It's just like some like we we differentiate ourselves into classes of like spiritualism but ultimately a spiritual person is like a spiritual person yeah we're just choosing to get by in this life different ways you know one of us is asking for a handout one of us is not Mm -hmm. so like it's funny because that actually extends to martial arts too because like uh so when i ask you guru um in our niece they call them gurus or guru it's, it's like guru. <laughs> what did what, you say? Gross. Gross. <laughs> They're so sick with their technique that they call them gross. gross. <laughs> oh, no, no. no um, they they call them gurus. Yeah. And it's like, I. That's one thing I don't like about martial arts um, etiquette, like calling them sensei or master. It's like, bro, be your own goddamn master. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I feel like the. I feel like a lot of separation, even, like we're like, oh no, we're all on a spiritual path, then why am I calling you master? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, and that's why when I teach something, I only say like, dude, I've just been around longer and I've done cool stuff. I'm just gonna show you something cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you don't need to call me sensei. That's really weird actually. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to have to have that role over you. Like people are just people, you know what I mean? At the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. There's a lot of, I don't know. It's perception, man. Yeah. Like, there, uh, what what I've what I've come to realize myself is that, like, uh, like people are just big kids. You know, we all we all grow up. Like, time will always pass, right? Mm-hmm. And we're always gonna just grow up. And because of that, you can't stop. Like, you you're gonna become an adult. Yeah. You know, so you could essentially become like a a big kid in a man's body. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, and then you look I at them like, oh, Yo, you're like a man. Well, well, well. That's kind of what it is, right? Like, nobody knows, like, what what's gonna happen next. Everything exactly. Is so it's like, why, why don't why don't we just give up this illusion and enjoy the moment? But no, yeah. we can't do that because some people know what's more important than other people. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's like you don't, you can never say what's most important. Yeah, everyone has their own what Opinion. should be their important thing, I guess. Like yeah, what, for sure. Don't, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I'm, I'm chill about this. Like, I don't really, whatever you want to do, you do, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are the most chill about this, actually. I remember, like, growing up and stuff, you were here. Even still, you're, like, super chill. <laughs> it's like, eh, whatever happens, happens, you know? Yeah. I don't know how much of that is. I mean, it's probably the upbringing, but it's like how much of that is like yeah. self-taught, yeah, or like realized. Or realized, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, so I was I was having this conversation with Sid. Like, let me let me get your opinion on it. So, like, realized being real. So, in in spiritual texts, they say like to be a realized human being is to like the highest form, right? Like a realized self is the highest self. Okay. Okay. And and I was thinking about it because like I gave him like an aha moment, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh, you just realized something, and I was like, oh, that aha moment is like our greatest feeling. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. think about anything you do, right? I was like saying to him, like, like when you win a sports game, the only reason why you play the sports is because you're like, can I win this? And then you win it, you're like, oh my god, I am great. Mm -hmm. You realize something. Realization is the highest energy. You know, even when I create something, I'm not excited during the creation. Once it's done, it's like, oh, I, oh, like I realize that I there's something great here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess I guess they say that because like realization is always an after the fact thing. It's like once the mind has re-entered, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in the moment, you're like not really thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like as soon as the mind enters, you realize something like that's, or or you regret something. That's like from a negative point of view. But that's probably why they say like a realized self is the highest self, mm -hmm. whereas like a, a regretful self is the worst self. <laughs> you know, you ever hear that line like um, what? 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 why the worst so oh because like you regret what you've done because like all right so when you're doing something there's no mind yeah, it's only you regret what you've done you learn from it and not do it again oh it depends on your outlook because some people can get so stuck can you, in their regret yeah so can you switch like like switch was, them yeah, yeah exactly I was, I was about to ask you like like have you heard those like people who say like i regret nothing in life like regret yeah, nothing because yeah, yeah. everything led you to this moment right and i think that only math that only works if you're happy in this moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you like who you are, sweet, don't change anything. But if you don't <laughs> like who you are, maybe it's time to start changing yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you know that line where it's like, if you can go back in your past and change one thing, what would it be? And I was always like, nothing, because I'm <laughs> I think happy I where too. I am. You know what I mean? Like, and then people are like, you know, there's this one time that blah, blah, blah. It's like, well. Because my, my thing was like, well, I wouldn't be in this. But I, I don't know if I change something. I don't know if I'll be the same me. Exactly. Exactly. Like, oh, it, uh, you know, if I were to change something, I would have just not done this. Then it's like, well, then you jump to that other you and you'd have been like a total dick. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know? You don't know. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Do you, yeah, exactly. Do you like where you are right now? Exactly. Yeah. Right. And I guess if you don't, I mean, you did need to but change something. Maybe you should goddamn <laughs> change something. But the the <laughs> the sad part is like you can't actually change anything retroactively. You can only change something like proactively. Right. So like, um, so it's like, why even ask that question? You know what I mean? It's like, what if you're like, what can you change about your past? Oh, so now you just want me to suffer over something that I can't <laughs> relive forget. that shit. Yeah, no, relive it. Yeah, you're making me feel bad now. <laughs> you're just like, let it go. You know. That, that's almost probably like so like I find that whenever I um whenever I'm dealing with somebody with like lots of sadness because mm -hmm. like you encounter that all the time not like necessarily teaching but in life like somebody's always like sad for some reason yeah, right yeah, yeah. I always I always like to like distract them with something yeah, yeah. because like take if, them out of it because yeah exactly take them out of it right so it's like so like I was talking to this person and they're like oh we, we like to we like to have these ceremonies where we like talk about our pain mm -hmm. and but like the kids aren't really um they're not really taking to it. And I'm like, well, no, duh. I mean, like, a kid just wants to be a kid, bro. Like, if you want to make them feel better, just play with them, you know? Because, like, when we were when we were in Peru, um, like, we were yeah. dealing with orphan kids. Mm -hmm. And they loved me. Like, I was, like, super – like, I mean, I do really well with kids because, like, I just play games, right? So, like, we were playing games, and they, like, they loved me. And they forgot about their sadness. And it was like, yeah, but, but then all of a sudden you go, like, hey, man, like, remember that time that your dad beat you? Yeah, they're just, like, they're just kids, bro. Like, right, but, but that even works for adults too. Yeah, you know, it's like it's like uh, okay, now we're gonna relive this and get over our problem. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, like uh, therapists and stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's like maybe the path is not to maybe the path isn't to like like you're using mind to get out of mind, and it's very difficult to do that. Mm -hmm. What is what is generally a therapist's job, though? Uh, I don't know. What is a therapist's job? To help you relive and overcome something? H help you accept something? Confront something? Maybe, maybe acceptance or something. Confront, yeah, but like, I don't know. but like, all right, so if I were a therapist, I'm not a therapist, but I would just be like, hey, man, what do you like to do for fun? Yeah. You know, that's your therapy, bro. Yeah. But then they have the danger of like, oh, I like to do drugs for fun, or like, I like to have like... Like uh, it's like a fine line. I, I don't believe you can fix anyone. I believe that you can only like help push them in, in a direction. Mm -hmm. But like ultimately, uh, it's up to them. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I don't think I, like I can show you the door, but at the end of the day, you're the one who's gonna have to walk through it. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what the therapist is trying to do. No, like well, I, I think. maybe, but like it, it's almost like a losing battle. 
mm-hmm. you know, because like some people go to therapy and then they just use that as their crutch. They're like, oh, I'm just going to talk to my therapist without solving any problems. You know what I mean? Like oftentimes, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's like just confront the problem or leave the situation. Sometimes you can't confront the problem, leave the situation. Right. Yeah. Or if it's something really bad, like, oh, I was like, uh, I was abused as a child. Like, I don't know what that feels like because I've never been abused as a child. But, like, I would just, like, redirect it. Because it's all about, like, learned behavior, right? It's like um, it's like you're unconditioning somebody to some... All right, so, like, let's say uh, somebody... This is a terrible example, but let's say somebody had, like, a bad sexual experience as a kid. Like, they're molested or something. And then they get, like, another partner and they're having a hard time, um, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. right? This is it... Bad. I don't know why I jumped in. Yeah, I, I don't know. Down. I was like, all right, well, let's just, all right. <laughs> let's say as a kid, the person didn't like dogs because they were getting bitten. Okay. And then, um, and then so totally they want to buy a dog now, or like they're forced to live with a dog, et cetera, et cetera. And then, uh, it's it's all about like, so you've, you've classically conditioned yourself to be afraid of dogs. Every time you see a dog, you freak out, right? But, like, I think the way to do it would be to slowly recondition yourself to realizing dogs are okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, but, like, I don't think it's, it's like, if you go to therapy and you're like, hey, let me just talk about my dog experience. I don't think that's, I, I think the therapist is trying to make you get to the point where you also get, like, dogs are okay. No, because no, cause they, they don't, no, because then why would they go to uh, Again, I don't have an experience of this by experience of TV shows. That's true. No, no, but I know, I know that there. I know people who are in therapy, okay. and like they just talk about it, and they like, they like use it as a forum to communicate. You know, what I mean? mm-hmm. but it's like rather than communicating, why don't you just address the problem? I see. Right. The yeah. You know, rehabituate yourself. It's, I think that's easier said than done, but like you got to do different kinds of therapy. Who knows? Yeah, that's true too. That's true too. Just got a bad therapist got someone else get out get out now <laughs> yeah um yeah what else we got pain pain is a no nah. uh yeah so all right let's just shift pain, topics pain? onto like games um have you seen Ooh, what do you think of the new black panther trailer i was asking sid he doesn't watch any trailers yeah i was like so sad i was like man yeah, my friend's like nah. no I was like, yeah. oh, dude. the same way my friend doesn't watch it either it's like because he when he, if he sees a trailer, it's like, uh, um, no, no, like, he, you know, he watched trailers. He just hasn't seen the Black Panther. Oh, yes, like, he's, he's not. Oh, no, no, like okay, oh, okay. Are, you know, oh, like, as soon as it came out, I was like, oh my god, I watch this. Uh, well, this person doesn't like to watch trailers. Oh, and he's probably gonna listen here. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's gonna ruin the uh, ruin the experience. Is that what it is? Like, no, no. Uh, it's. It, I think it's like. I think I understand what he's saying. If you're watching the movie and you've seen a trailer and you know certain scenes is going to be coming up okay yeah you're kind of ruining it's like oh wait i'm waiting for that scene it's not there yet or something right versus oh, if he's just watching it without any inclination of what has happened in the trailer or anything it's just nothing but a ex- whole new experience you know what you do you just don't watch the trailers leading up to the date that's it no, he doesn't watch the trailers at all no, yeah, 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 no, no, but you can still watch the trailer and then just like as it's coming back, you're like, what was that trailer about? Yeah. And then you just don't watch it before the movie comes out. That's generally what happens to me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you like to delete your, uh, you like to delete your memory banks <laughs> really quickly. <laughs> and you know what's the, the funny thing about that is like, as I was saying before, that like, like all spirituality is about like managing the mind, right? And one of the things that they all aim to do is delete the past as soon as it happens it's like no new moment new moment new moment new moment over and over and over right Uh and it's like you kind of just accidentally do that (laughs) you know you're just like i'll be like talking to you and then it's like i don't remember that bro i'm like oh that's why it was hard for me to talk about what has happened as a kid because i don't remember that much exactly yeah you don't hold on to it yeah i remember i was gonna say about this um uh it's interesting how like spiritual like like sanskrit terms right they have this term called samskara some what? Samskara. Okay. And what that is is like it's like a pre-programmed habitual response due to uh, some memory or trauma as a child. Okay. Basically, it's just like a learned behavior. Mm-hmm. But it's like, and and then, like why? It, it's like well, one, they've been doing the study for quite some time, 
you know, like it's it's evident that yogis have something to teach us in modern day. And two, uh, but we think it's pretty. We think it's bro science. You know what I mean? Bro because science. Bro science is like BS science. Oh, okay. it's not real. Okay. You know? I didn't know um, that's what it meant. Well, what? I didn't know that's what it meant. Oh, okay. yeah, bro science, bro. So uh, maybe I've heard of it before. I forgot. Exactly. You keep deleting your memory you know, <laughs> too quickly. So uh, there's that. But then like, like the utilization of these terms to make yourself sound smart. You know, mm-hmm. It's almost like being a doctor. You know when like a doctor will use like, oh, the tetrahedral, uh, no, that's friggin', that's a lie. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, I made that up. That's, I'm not a doctor. So uh, the neuroplasticity within the brain shoots a dopamine through your connective tissues, thus allowing, you know, some BS yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. And you're like, okay, bro, I didn't go to medical school. Mm-hmm. Just tell me in plain English. Yeah. You know, like, but it, it's, it's one of two things. It's either they're overcompensating you know yeah or uh they don't understand it because simple is complicated understood okay you know if you can if you can say it to a child you can you really know what you're talking about because mm-hmm. i don't think any theory is too complex yeah if you yeah if you understand the whole idea if you it, really understand you know yeah. from like a total like a maybe it takes the complexity to reach the simplicity. Oh, of course, yeah. You have to go hard before you can go simple. Yeah, yeah. You have to like understand all depths of it. That that's that's kind of why like like I did so much intense study of like this whole like spirituality stuff, and then it's like, oh, it's very simple actually. You don't need to make it ultra complicated. <laughs> when you make it ultra complicated, nobody will learn it. But if you just tell somebody, dude, like just chill. It's all in your head. Just breathe. Relax. Well, just what? Chill and breathe. Chill and breathe, yo. Chill and breathe. It's all good. You got this. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then it's like, oh, and then it's like, yeah, that's yoga. And they're like, no, I thought yoga was all about the pot. Like my sister. I was like having a. Oh, the postures? Is yeah, it? I was like, I was talking to her. I, in think, the I car. think many people think that. Exactly. So, like, she's, she's like, no, I don't want to do yoga. She's not the minority. That's what she's I'm saying. The majority. Right, right. Because, like, Western culture has, like, usurped yoga and made it into this thing that it's not really. Like, everyone in India practices some form of yoga because of their belief system. Yeah. You know, like, Gyan yoga is the path of study and, like, your philosophy in India is Gyan Yoga. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So anyway, so like I was like with my sister and then I was saying like, I was saying some stuff and then she's like, oh man, yoga is so hard. And I'm like, no, we're just doing yoga right now. And she's like, what do you mean? I was like, we're talking. A discussion. There's a discussion. They were just like philosophers back then. Yeah, maybe, we, yeah, I think we gave them too much. Not in a, like a bad way, like, or somewhere along the wire, along the line, there's tra- like a translation issue, and give them like so much power. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly, exactly. When you're losing the context. That's why I was saying like these babas and stuff. They're just homeless people. <laughs> it's like, bro, if you really look at it, I, you know what pisses me off? It's like when when they're like, oh no, I gotta live above the system, bro. You're in the system. And even if you live outside of this system, or you're relying on someone else in the system. Exactly. You're just like you're taking advantage. You know, but even if they're like, oh, I don't like this system. Okay, but you realize that when you leave the system, you're going to create your own system, thus being back into a system. I don't see. Oh, oh, they almost died. Um, I don't see a problem. Like these with the system. We, I mean, we create these systems. We can change these systems. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, totally, totally. But uh, what, what what I mean is like, even when people go and leave a specific system to mm-hmm. create a new system. It's still a system. So it's like, what are you escaping, bro? What you're really trying to say is you don't like the way that we live life in this society. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Like, really think about it more. Use some big boy words. (laughs) And don't just say, down with the system. Because, like, what system are you talking about, bro? Yeah. No, we're going to live in a commune. We're all going to live together. And we're just going to, like, grow our own crops. That's a system. I don't want that. That's no, no. I, that's the system you don't want to be a part of. No, but yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying is like that that's is also a system. Uh, I see you what you're right? saying. Yeah, like, that, that is like, also a, a version of a system. That's basically agriculturalism in the beginning. <laughs> so it's like when we had smaller tribes and you guys were like hunting and like doing all that stuff, right, like working right, right. as a team. Like that's basically what a commune is. You're working as an agricultural system. That's just not up to date. Right. Yeah. You know, like. Yeah. I don't know. We're so confused. But you know what's not confusing? Guy Ritchie, because he's awesome. Why did you bring Guy Ritchie up? Because I was thinking about King Arthur. Oh, King oh, King Arthur. Well, that's all right. Yeah, did you like King Arthur? It's all right. All right. It's fine. okay. 
You saw it, right? Guy Ritchie's King Arthur. I think we saw it together. Yeah, oh, okay. oh, yeah, we did see it together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, You're going off on it. Yeah, I was going off because what he was saying was like, if you watch the King Arthur movie, he was like going off on Joe Rogan about like all this analogy and stuff. And Joe Rogan's like, are you sure people will see it that way? And he's like, if you have the eyes to see, you'll see it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, totally. Like, that's from more. That's like a lot of movies like that too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Underlying meanings. Underlying, yeah, totally, totally, totally. Like, uh, uh, the, uh, now I'm being cognizant of me saying totally all the time. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, now I'm like self-conscious about saying totally. 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 Totes. <laughs> I should just switch it to my totes. Goats. That might be really annoying. Totes, totes, totes. My goats. Totes, my goats. <laughs> yeah, so, so like, um, King Arthur was great because it was like, uh, it was like about all of our internal struggles for greatness. Like, all right, so <laughs> if you're listening to this and you're going to go watch King Arthur, watch the, um, Watch the Guy Ritchie version and basically keep this in your mind. The whole movie is an analogy about a person who's trying to escape from their fate. Like they are destined for greatness. They have the ability to become great. And what they do is they they run from their greatness because they don't think that they're worthy enough. That's like everyone in society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like all of us. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's why I liked it. I was oh, like, oh, I you're see, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right? So like when he threw away the sword, he's like, I don't want this obligation. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's like everyone. So it's like if you know that if you only studied for your test, you'd get an A+. Plus. But the obligation of having to study is like you throwing away the sword. You're like, I can't do it. It's too <laughs> difficult. You know what I mean? It's like... Even like Jesus when he was uh, going against the cross. Well, last game. Um, even Jesus when he was going against the cross or he was going to be like crucified and stuff, he asked God to like, like, please God, like, let me pass pass this cup away from me or something like that. Like, basically, like, I don't want to have to deal with this. And yeah. it's like, but you are destined to do it. Not necessarily destined, but it's like life aligned you in the way to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's why I like the movie. So you agree great metaphor for everyone's struggle plus the martial arts is awesome martial arts oh oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, like the sword fighting yeah they did it was pretty cool like the whole the vision of it like it it was really different oh the visuals visuals oh like the way he is his vision oh yeah for sure it was very like gangster you know like it's that guy (laughs) richie style yeah yeah, yeah, i really liked it i don't know it it i i I'll give him ch- like I know that what he does is movies, so I kind of expected that to see. Yeah, that, like, but it quick felt talking. like yeah, but it felt weird for that period. Period, kind of right, thing. Right, right. But see, but like I know what he was. I, I mean, I don't see anything wrong with you taking those kinds of risks. Totally, totally, totally. I agree with you. I agree with you. But see, I think it was because I was uh, I was already pre pro like in my subconscious. I was thinking about the interview that I watched prior to seeing the movie, and like so you were ready. So I was ready. I I yeah. I got what he was trying to do. He wasn't trying to actually tell the story of King Arthur. He was trying to tell the analogy of King Arthur. Yeah. You know, it, it, like he didn't. I'm pretty sure he didn't care about like actual King Arthur ness. Like it was just the best medium from which to tell this his that uh, kind of story. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of them. I like that's why I like to listen to like director's cut. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, the good sob director's cut because like some it's like. Well, it depends oh, on the movie. Scene but of sucked. course, we weren't supposed to walk in here. Oh, this is actually. A I, I like cut. that too. Actually, we laughed. Oh, true. I, I guess. Well, you know what? I'd, I'd actually prefer to watch those kinds of movies, like that kind of stuff, because you learn something versus like watching an actual movie. Because sometimes like movies can be really bad, draining on the mind. Uh, yeah, I mean, if it's a bad movie. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there was a lot of bad movies this summer. Yes, this was a... Uh, this was a bad... Uh, well, I mean, we did... Wait, was King Arthur a part of the summer blockbuster? Because that movie was awesome. I don't remember. Was it? Oh, yeah, it was. It, not really. It was, it was like May. It was kind of. It was like school. But like, that's like... I'm, not, I'm saying like the majority. I'm not going to say all were bad. Weren't there some good ones? Like King Arthur. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I can't remember now what was what else was out, but I knew that I didn't like a lot of them. Um, yeah, I don't, I, well, you know what? That's how you know it was a bad summer. We can't <laughs> even remember the movies. You're like, what movies were out? I don't even know. Oh, Wonder Woman. I, I didn't, didn't like. I that. didn't like. I, I, I didn't I, like that. Everyone went off. You know what it was? There, but what did I? What was my issue? Was she didn't have her her key ups? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> like yeah. that that she had in. Um, 
B- uh, BVS, Bound oh, Resumer. Yeah, let, let me let me blow your own mind on this one because I was telling Sydney about it, but I haven't told you yet. Um, I watched the Wonder Woman documentary movie, like the creator of Wonder Woman. Yeah. He was he was a psychologist at Harvard or Re- River. Who the creator? Yeah, the creator. I think it was Harvard. Now that I'm like, I'm like second guessing myself, I think it was Harvard. Wherever it was, he was a psychologist. He um, he fell in love with a student, and then <laughs> the student fell in love with his wife and okay. him. Yeah. So the whole movie was about like, can you love multiple people at once? Oh, okay. Yeah, it was, re- it was really interesting. Like uh, they were definitely the two girls were definitely bi, but the guy was not bi because he loved girls. Okay. Uh, and uh, the so that when that got found out, he got kicked out. They were actually the inventors of the lie machine, uh, lie detector, lie machine, lie detector. Mm-hmm. He and then that's why they wrote in. So like he was trying to figure out how he would make money, and that's when he created uh, Wonder Woman. So oh. like yeah, it's really interesting, right? And like he built in the uh, golden lasso was because he invented the lie detector. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, right. But here's here's the crazy part because he he was like very like into like weird sexual stuff. Yeah, I was gonna say like yeah, yeah, you yeah. mentioned you you text me what like bondage or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and that's, I was like, isn't that what was that the rope was for? Or something? Yeah, yeah. That, that, <laughs> so like, uh, so like he learned a bondage technique of like tying a girl up, and okay. that's where he got like the um, he got like the uh, the rope for Wonder Woman. Yeah, and then like her outfit was like a very like bondagey outfit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, so basically, the whole movie is he came up with a disc theory. Yeah. I, I don't remember what the acronym was for, like, but the, the, but the, it was like uh, the S was submissive. So you know, like, like you know, you have to be the submissive in like. It kind of sounds like weird sexual yeah. perversion, right? You have to be the submissive, right? Yeah. So his theory is that like all encounters are broken down into this disc theory, right? Oh. So then, when he created Wonder Woman: The Story, he was actually trying to prove disc theory through the um, through the comic book. Oh. So like he was he was showing like a lot of the old depictions of Wonder Woman yeah. were very like sexual and submissive. Like she'd tie she'd be tied up and like oh no they're gonna kill you Wonder Woman and then she'd be tied up in a weird provocative way. Oh. Yeah, it was, it, you have to watch the movie. It's crazy. Oh wow. Okay. And then and then like <laughs> and then she would tie up her her victim not her victims but like bad guys in a very sexual yeah. manner as well like hog tie them and shit uh-huh. and then like it was really weird to see oh my god yeah it was just crazy but and see the underlying tones that's what i'm saying like yeah. comic book yeah so the whole movie oh, wow. was about like it the whole premise is like he had to uh justify his decisions in court like it not in court but like he was being questioned why oh it just why was he being questioned? Like because like uh, the like they were starting to take Wonder Woman off the shelves because it was too provocative. Oh, I see. I see so I like see. the whole he- thing was like a hearing between him and this girl, mm-hmm. you know. And then they had to figure out like, uh, is it too sexual? Is it did he go too far? Blah blah blah. Right. But when you look at like the way he lived his life, it was very like erotic. Oh, I which see. is how he drew Wonder Woman. But it's <laughs> funny because like his his so it was a guy's interpretation. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Wow. And his, um, his, that makes uh, sense. right? Yeah, yeah totally. Mm-hmm. And his, uh, his justification was that he wanted to create women empowerment. But it's like he didn't actually want to do women empowerment. He wanted to prove his disc theory. Oh. Okay. But like he was saying women empowerment in order to get the pro- uh, the, the, uh, the comic book released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess you'll love this one. Guess who he went to as the publisher? Who he lent what? Guess who he went to first to like publish the comic? Who? The one who discovered Superman. Oh, Joe Schuster or something like that. Well, okay. Yeah, so it's really cool. So like, he went to like the publisher of Superman, and he's like, "I got the best comic for you." And then blah blah. blah then he's like, "Oh, this would never fly." And he's like, "No, it's about re-feminizing women." Oh, he pitched it. In he a pitched way. it, and I was like, <laughs> "But like, you saw his underlying tone that he actually just wanted to prove disc theory." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's weird, man. Yeah, but now she's like a famous superhero. So. Yeah, but yeah, I'll never look at Wonder Woman again the same. Wonder Woman is just a character. It's m- m- now there's multiple versions, multiple types of stories. Yeah, like, but her like uh, it was funny because like, like maybe like the her incarnation of how it started. But, anyway, but it's, it's funny because he went to a burlesque uh, store, <laughs> and then he's like, "Oh, I love this!" And then he was pitching the comic book to his his two wives, yeah. and they're like, "Okay, she she looks like a burlesque woman." This is never gonna fly. And then they're like, no, it's athletic. 
Athletic? Yeah, he's, he's oh, like, I see. No, 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 she needs to be in a burlesque outfit because it's the most athletic. And then they're like, why does she have chains on her wrist? And he's like, they deflect bullets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like you were trying to justify your own sexual mm. um, desires. So that's, uh, yeah, it's so weird seeing where things have started. That's what I'm saying. You know? When I watched this movie, I was like, I actually feel a little gross like, watching the movie. It's kind of weird. And it, yeah, I know. It's... And it's like how they're using Wonder Woman now, though, as that's a, a method of that's woman what I'm saying. empowerment. That's what I'm saying. So, like, that's what's ironic. So, like, uh, so when funny. Wonder Woman came out, all the girls, like, I know this guy who's, like, he had a, do- he has a daughter, and he's like, oh, I Wonder Woman everything for her because, like, I want her to know that women are strong individuals. And when I watched the movie, I was like, uh, too bad that it's actually about being a dominatrix. <laughs> so... <laughs> That's a shame. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, all these people are like, oh, Wonder Woman's like a great female role model. Is she? Or I, is she like a It's just, person? yeah. I, I, <laughs> like, I, I thought it was kind of weird to say that. To what? what? To say her in that? No, I mean, like, yeah, to say that, oh, great woman role model. I'm like, yeah, like, it's like, what? but she's half naked. But she, yeah. but she fights for freedom, bro. <laughs> it's like, what? Like, all right. So, like, why don't you go get, like, a serial rapist fighting for freedom mm-hmm. are we gonna say that he's great <laughs> you know what I mean? it's like well we like to pick and choose as a society yeah, yeah, yeah you know it's like what will just trying to create our own new gods yeah that's true yeah yeah oh how is that show new gods uh it's called american gods oh american gods yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, just, it's old gods it's not new gods i mean it's old no, gods it's the versus gods. the old god old gods versus the new gods yeah that's what i'm saying so yeah how is it uh it's really good uh, worth it oh yeah because they, uh, not all episodes, but like the first few episodes, they kind of like go into certain, some of the old gods and yeah, uh, what they used to do. Like they go into their backstories? A uh, little bit. Uh, not like the backstories, more like how they came to America. Oh, that's cool. Whoa, okay. Like on a boat? Like what? No, I mean like with the first... So, oh, they actually go into that, like who who brought the no, theories. No, not oh. like not, it's, no, not this, this is, like, it's not literal truth. It's not a historical. fictional story. Oh, too bad. That would have been really cool if they like showed how. But in, in a general sense, they're trying to say like when the Vikings came here, that's how that's when Norse mythology came here. Right, right, or right, right, Odin right. came here, right? And then you know Zelda, Zelda the game. Yeah, Zelda the game Link. Okay, that's a that's a Norse mythology guy, eh? Like, oh. I, it was weird, because I was like, I was like, because you play the video game all the time, right? <laughs> and then, like, you never really think about it. You're just like, oh, he's Zelda. But yeah, then yeah. if you look at all of his, um, if you look at all of his, like, mm-hmm. uh, amulets, his sword style, it's all, like, uh, Norse. Oh, actually. He's a very, like, like, that, that sword that he has is a very, like, it's not like a Japanese sword. It's not like a, mm-hmm. you know, it's more of like a uh, Viking. Sorry, is Viking Norse? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's Norse. Yeah. Norse mythology. So he's he's dressed more like a Viking and he uses like Viking weaponry. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Right? But again, if you just say hey, victory, if you just like focus on where the origins of things come from, you'll figure this out. Okay. Summation. Um, now this match is over. What is the best thing about Overwatch? The best thing about Overwatch? Yeah. The it looks like Halo. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it you looks know like what? Quake. It's, what's there's something in here that. This is just a multiplayer game, but there's so much story in it. Yeah, but they they release like little no, 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 mini but videos, right? No, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, you can do like Call of Duty. It's a multiplayer game. Oh, I get what you're saying. So there, there there's so much story in it that people have you know like really like certain characters. It, you, you, you become emotionally invested in the characters yeah. and not see it as just a multiplayer game because you're you watching. Don't. Yeah, you, I, yeah, you actually stories. get to know their backstory. Yeah, they they release those videos. Exactly. But yeah. it's. Oh, that's a great way to get people hooked. Because like, if this was just like a game, then you'd be like, oh, I don't care about the characters. Like, who are these characters? Yeah. Yeah, but you have to like emotionally invest. Well, you know that's a marketing tactic. Like, yeah. if you can emotionally invest in a character, then you end up um, end up loving them and stuff. Yeah, but I think it also has to start with. Um, it also has to start with uh, with the the developers. What do you mean? I mean. The amount of energy they put into it. Oh, for sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. You gotta for love sure. what you're doing. For sure, no, no. And I, I think I that energy agree. spreads. So, do do you think if like, Im- do you think it would work? Like speaking of like emotional attachment, if we had like a Tetris, and you know Tetris is a very like basic game. So what if like you create a story behind Tetris? I guess. 
but I don't like, know how you could do that. You know, you know, like I'm just wondering, like how far reaching is this like marketing tactic? I don't think it might. I don't think it'll work there. Okay, so like you need. I think you need characters. You I think you need to. Yeah, you need to have actual. Like, Actually, I like that better. Like, like uh, finding out the story without having to like play through the game. Because like, if you want to find out the story for Call of Duty, you have to play beat the game. But you're like, I just bought Call of Duty to play online. But none of those characters mean anything. Exactly. Because yeah, the sure. next Call of Duty, the, who are these people? Totally, totally. But that's why I like Halo. Because like in Halo. Yeah. So Halo. Yeah. Exactly. Halo. But Halo is more of a story too. Like, you like that's the reason the why. I, really good. Yeah, that's the reason why I like Halo. The story. It's a story. On top of that, their multiplayer was amazing. Top notch. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I know like um, uh, old friends who would just buy the Halo and they wouldn't even play the story mode; they just play online. <laughs> just play it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like oh, it feels like kind of a waste of a game, but whatever. Actually, no, no, it's not a waste of a game because I bought GTA Five just for the online. We tried to play the story <laughs> mode, and I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Like, it's just too long. But the story mode is really good. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I wonder if it's like. I wonder if people like is it good to have a really but long I, story? Like, so there's there's a lot of issues though too like people do want story that's what I was gonna say yeah yeah, yeah. yeah you know, so when Battlefront came the first Battlefront came out Star uh, Wars Battlefront yeah there people was no story mode people hated it people did not like that mm. there's a lot of backlash right that makes sense so in the new Star Wars is coming out in next month or so mm. there's a story mode ah uh, okay Right. Well, yeah, because Cause, cause it's, it's, it's also like how much money you're spending. So you're spending 60, 70 bucks, depending on where you are, on the game. And there's no story mode. It's just multiplayer. Oh, I see. The value's not. Right. Yeah, I get you. But if, if you've got the story mode and it's the same price, then there's some, like, some level of understanding why it's like that much money and stuff, right? Like, it, it makes, because we're used to having story mode. And if it doesn't right. have story mode, why am I paying like 60 bucks? Right, I should right, be paying right. like fifty bucks or forty bucks or something. True, yeah, yeah I agree with you. Um, quick, quick side note because I just realized this because I was like, where did we get this idea for? I know, I know, we've been playing video games forever and like chatting as we play the video game, but you know who also had a similar um, idea about this, but he stopped it. Ghost Robo. <laughs> right? Do you remember those podcasts he tried to make? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like him and his friends, and then they were like playing the video game and they're chatting and stuff. But what they the difference is they had a podcast and they just overlaid video game footage on top of. Oh, I see what they're doing. They were it wasn't live. It wasn't yeah, like it, was, it wasn't like this. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like this way better. Yeah, because there's so much stuff value. happening, and, it, and it's actually more tougher on the mind. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Actually, no, no. I feel like um, I feel like because you're distracting yourself, you can only say something that's true to you in that moment yeah you know in like Sydney was talking about that when he first played he's like uh because i'm playing gta 5 like i can't pre-think about what i want to say as i say it because i'm doing something yeah, yeah, yeah which is like it keeps you honest you know what i mean like if we were having like a conversation you could easily like filter your dialogue yeah you but know again you wouldn't you know you're like a super jerk or something dude <laughs> exactly yeah yeah true true sure yeah the illusions yeah so um yeah I guess uh, all we really want to say is video games are pretty sick. You should always emotionally invest in your characters if you're creating a video game. Uh, yeah, that's when you can sell a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. That's yeah. saying, um, it'd be really cool if like one day, I'm just calling it right now on the podcast, it'd be really cool if one day somebody like hires us as uh, like intelligence experts. You know what I mean? Like how they do that? They're just like, come and play the game and you tell me what you think. Come oh I see. Yeah, like, I mean, is that like a tester's job? Is that what you said? Yeah, but like a uh, no no because doesn't a tester? Oh, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah it's, like, it's more like a creative consultant. Yeah, yeah, like when they they'll give people like some YouTubers. Right, and it's like it's like you early. seem to know games. Yeah, like let me know if this game sucks, and you're like this game sucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 but yeah, games are cool. Till next time. Peace. Bye. Bye. <laughs>